circuitous, hard one, and impatient. Well, hi there. This is Heather Vickery, and you've tuned in to the Brave Files podcast. I'm happy to have you here with us. Happy end of summer, brave hearts. We have such a fun, fun episode for you today. But before we get started, I want to personally invite you to join our free group, the Brave on Purpose Collective. We are housed on Facebook, and this is a wonderful little corner of the internet where everyone is there trying to embrace their fears to live a bigger, bolder, more joy-filled life, and certainly a more brave one. Because what we know for sure is that when we choose bravely on purpose, when we're thoughtful and intentional about it, we choose bigger, win bigger, and it's contagious. So that's why we come together in the Brave on Purpose Collective to support one another, challenge each other in beautiful ways. We refer business to one another and we find a beautiful, loving, affirming, and brave community of incredibly diverse folks from across the globe. All you have to do is search Brave on Purpose on Facebook, answer three simple questions, and bam, you're in. I cannot wait to see you there. I also want to remind you that I am here to support you on your brave journey. I invite you to have a conversation with me, hit me up in my DMs, connect with me on Instagram or Twitter at Vickery and Co is my tag of both Instagram and Twitter. I want to get to know you better. If you're listening to the Brave Files, then I know you are out every day trying to choose bravely and I want to be part of that journey with you. So send me an email, send me a DM connect on all of the socials and I look forward to learning more about your personal brave journey. All right, friends. So today you are in for a really great treat. I had the pleasure of talking with my extremely vivacious friend, Annie P. Ruggles about discovering her own brave and learning to legitimize it rather than diminish it. Annie and I talk about the importance of names, owning our names advocating for our names, making sure people respect our names. We talk about learning to let go of those painful moments where we feel rejected or embarrassed and allowing something to be painful, but learning to not give it so much power over us. We talk about how eventually small brave acts become easier and less scary and all the good stuff happens just outside of your comfort zone. We even talk about how the act of allowing yourself to feel your feelings without judgment is brave AF. We talk about all of that and so much more. Grab a glass or a cup of your favorite beverage and let's get to it. This is Heather Vickery and you're listening to The Brave Files, stories from people living courageously. When we choose bravely in big and small ways, It powerfully elevates our lives. I hope these stories connect with you and encourage you to embrace bravery in every possible way, day after day. Together, we can build a movement of courageous living that enriches both our lives and our communities. And if you enjoy the show, I ask you to please share it with others. Maybe think of someone who you want to choose bravely right alongside you. Thanks for tuning in. Now here's the show. You can't say three words and not expect three and a half. Come on. (laughs) All right, listeners, you guys are going to have some fun today. Y'all are going to get to meet, you've already sort of kind of a little bit here, met my friend Annie P. Ruggles. And Annie and I first met in a clubhouse room, and we kind of hit it off. (laughs) It's a clubhouse. And she had me on her podcast, Too Legitimate to Quit, where we talked about Bridgerton, the TV series, not the books, and being brave enough to change the freaking rules. And of course, I wrote that before I knew Annie's three words, which are rule breaking, because you know, I love three that. Three and a half words. <laughs> and it was almost four words. I almost went, instead of circuitous, I almost went with topsy turvy, which would have been two hyphenates. But I was like, no, I can't do that. I got to sort of obey the rule. So I, mean, I went I, with circuitous. I'm anti rules, but my my marketing folks might have been like, I can't fit this on. <laughs> what? On one asset, I love it. All right, you guys, Annie is ballsy, gutsy, hilarious, and seriously brave. 
NAP Ruggles. Welcome to The Brave Files. Thank you, my beloved. I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> okay, so why is it impossible to call you anything except Annie P. Ruggles? And I have to tell you a funny story about that. Um, so here's the thing. I love my maiden name, Passanisi. I think it's great. I got a strong connection with my last name, original last name. Like how you have your strong connection to Vickery. But yeah. first off, I was like, well, I don't know if I want to do the blended family, whatever the crap. But however... However, I married into a family that decided it for me because my mother-in-law's name is Ruth Ann, and she goes as Annie, and my um. sisters-in-law are named Ann D, A-N-D-I, and <laughs> Diana, which as a joke, my little brother Roger, on their first date, said, if we get married, everybody's going to call you Anna, so they do. So we have Annie, Annie, Andy, and Anna, so I'm Annie P., to at least put a freaking initial in that thing. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Isn't it wild? That makes so much sense. Okay, so this is how, uh, really, this is how everybody knows you. So I was recently at a podcasting conference and I hosted a queer meetup, Queer Podcasters Unite. It was super Woo-hoo. fun. It was this really cool speakeasy that we couldn't even find. It really worked. <laughs> We're like, wait. <laughs> It's not here. (laughs) And so I'm sitting and I'm chatting and I'm chatting it up with this sweet young guy who has like the biggest Harry Potter podcast in the history of existence. We're going to have him on the show. And and out of nowhere, I get past this guy, my card, and out of nowhere, he turns to me and he goes, do you know Annie P. Ruggles? (laughs) I go, "Uh, yeah. But of course, he calls you by full name, Annie P. Ruggles. And I was like, yeah, I was on her show. He's like, I edit her show. <laughs> so it was your Andrew. And then we got my Andrew. And we've talked about our Andrews. And I was a little offended. I was like, so, Andrew, my show was not memorable? Was that what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah, he sent me an email that was like, I was totally embarrassed because I'm terrible with names. And I'm like, yeah, but you're supposed to be good with voices, dude. Just kidding, Andrew. We totally love you. We it was love so you, funny. darling, darling Andrew, and it all 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 editors named Andrew. We're all into editors you. named Andrew. We are into you. That is a real thing. Anyway, I thought it was amazing, and I did comment then. I'm like, I love how we all just can't help but call her Annie P. Ruggles. This is amazing. Well, and it's he always like, this yeah. little dance about like, but is your first name Annie P. or can I call you <laughs> Annie or like what? And I'm like, you can call me anything you want. Just don't call me Anne. Oh. And don't just call me Ruggles. Oh, because that's not you in any way. No. Yeah. And yeah. like my own, one of my like dearest friends wrote an article about me and my work. And I think I'd been married it for like mm, three or four years at this point. Not, not anything, you know, insignificant or fully significant. But it was the first time that I was quoted in an article and it said, blah, 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 blah said Ruggles. And I was Ooh. like, who the heck said that? I didn't say that. Like, <laughs> I said that, but like, who the heck is Ruggles? Like, that sounds like my husband. What? Yes. And so I told her, I was like, as one of my dearest friends, could you not have at least been like, P. Ruggles? And she was like, that wouldn't have made any sense. And I'm like, I know. It's not a perfect science. <laughs> it's not supposed to make sense. It's not about making sense. <laughs> but, you know, names are important. This wasn't really the direction I anticipated this conversation going today. But names are so important. And this is just, you know, we talk a lot at my house about recognizing pronouns and names changes and this and that. But it's not just that. In the black community, people's names get misspoken all the time. Like, just take the time, have the courtesy to ask how somebody wants to be referred to. Don't nickname without assumption. Like, names really matter. People call me Vicky. And I lose my shit. Vicky? Yeah, all the time. Why? All the time. I really because they're not paying any damn attention. That's why. So like, hey, Vicky, like that is that's really yeah. weird. Not no, but your they're name not paying attention. Your name is your title. We're not lords and ladies anymore, right? Like your name is how you <laughs> declare yourself to the world. Yeah. So it's important, and I just like I don't think that there's any excuse for mispronouncing someone's name anymore in that. No. How hard is it really, honestly, truly to say, even before you talk to them, pronounce your name for me? Yeah, I think one I... of the, yeah, like, did I say that? Not even did I say that wrong. 
pronounce your name for me so that I never say it wrong. Yeah, that's right. Can I get a phonetic spelling of your name so that I don't screw it up? Yes. I say that all the time. Yes. I'm a Passanese. They used to put R's and K's in it. May I speak to <laughs> Anne Pernasaski? And you're like, what? But I think also with, with you know, non-traditionally white people names, yes, white people, I'm calling us lazy. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, I, I met a woman once right when I started doing a different form of interview shows a few years ago, and it really stuck with me because I asked her up front, give me a phonetic spelling of your name. I don't want to misplace it. And she said, do you want the easy version or the real version? What? And it really your name, baby. hurt me yeah. for her because I was like, you shouldn't have to use an easy version of your name. Your name is your name. I should rise to the occasion of saying your name with reverence, respect, and accuracy. Yeah. It makes me think of, uh, do you follow Benjamin Zander at all? No. Art of Possibility. Oh, hey, he's my fave fave right now. Get the book, The Art of Possibility, and we'll link in the show notes to a a little 15-minute YouTube video of his. He's a conductor and a musician, but he's also a motivational speaker, and he's amazing. But he has this thing where he talks about uh, names. Well, to give it more context, he has this whole program where he says, "I, I only teach A students. And the first day they walk in, he says to them, you have an A. Yeah. You have an A in this class. The only thing you have to do is within the next week, write me a letter dated a year from today and tell me who you had to become to earn the A because I only teach A students. Isn't that amazing? So I do it with my clients now in my Intentionally Brave Entrepreneurs program and it's so wildly, beautifully impactful. But he had a teacher come up to him and say, oh, that's so cute, you do that once. But like surely, you know, you get to know them and uh, maybe – you find out they're really they're really not A students. And he tells the story that I'm telling doing his whole shtick right now, but it's so good. He tells the story where um, he said, I, I met this young girl and I went up to her and I said, what's your name? And she, she said, Joy. And and he said, excuse me? She said, Joy. <laughs> and, and he said, should her parents change her name? <laughs> he said, parents don't give children names to live up to. They give them names to live into. Right. Oh my God. Right. Yeah, and you, if and if we're mispronouncing each other's names, we're saying right now, like right off the bat, I don't care what you're growing into. That's exactly right. That's exactly it. That level I of disrespect. I can't be bothered what you're growing into. Mm. Okay. So this actually unexpectedly, because because serendipity and all this really cool stuff leads into. Talking about you, my dear friend, Annie P. Ruggles, and sort of your journey of understanding and perfection in yourself, resilience in the face of rejection, like these things all tie in. Like, How do we stand firmly and sway gracefully, roll with the punches, but also like stand up for ourselves and, and keep being resilient and showing up? And that's so much about how you have ended up being this powerhouse of a human that you are. Well, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's it's easy for me to hear the word powerhouse connected to myself and immediately want to deflect that. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the Welcome things... Welcome to being a woman in America. Right? But <laughs> that's one of the things that I, in my own path to being brave, I think owning compliments um, and declaring them true... Yeah. is something that I still struggle with, but in my own path to bravery and in my own path to sex a- self-actualization. There we go. Self- <laughs> was actualiz- like sexualization? It sexualization. Okay. No, self, <laughs> self-actualization. There's some work for the Andrews. Um, but yeah, it, on my own path to that, it's so easy, and I see this with my clients all the time, We get the compliment, we receive the compliment, and the first thing we do is, like, we volley it back over the net. Oh, my God, that's so amazing that you would call me a powerhouse because you're such a powerhouse. Let's talk about how amazing you are. And and it's because we don't want to seem hot-headed or arrogant or vain, but it really is this dance between owning your shiz and owning your power and intentionally choosing not to just 
turn the volume down on yourself all the time. And and for me, I guess one of my words could have been volume because I'm a very loud introvert, (laughs) right? Yeah, you are. I'm very loud and I'm also super introverted. Yeah. And when I'm done, I'm done. And like you and I are super buddies, but I don't need to be the center of attention. I don't need to be surrounded by people. I would rather have a small, (laughs) intimate event with people I already know than like, let's throw me on a keynote stage. I've done it and I've done it well. But small groups are where I really thrive. And that is because I have just this absolute uh, aversion, intolerance, allergy, dread, fear, phobia of rejection. And not even rejection of humiliation and abandonment. And that's just based on good old-fashioned American grade school trauma. Oh, it, hurt, it hurts my heart. It hurts my heart. And and I just, I look back on where I've been and, I mean, everybody's got grade school trauma. I'm not special <laughs> in that. But, like, <laughs> I used to eat lunch in the bathroom. Oh, I Annie. I passed around a list saying if you could change one thing about Annie, what would make her be your friend? I passed that list around my entire class. Um, cause I had no friends. And Wait, what kind thing. of response did you get to that? Uh, one person that was my friend and I didn't realize it at the time, picked it up and threw it in the trash. Good friend. Right. That's a good and, friend. But like, I was so desperate to be liked that I thought, here's what I'll do. I'll dance the dance. I'll turn up the parts that they want to see. I'll turn down the parts that are the true me that have been so badly hurt. I'll hide those away behind a bunch of bombast and I'll shape shift into this performative reactionary cartoon. And the thing is, I'm very Muppety. I'm a Muppet human. I have very big <laughs> eyes. I have a very big butt and I'm very short. I look very Betty Boopy. I look very cartoonish. Betty Boopy was hot. Please. Yeah, man. But like I can rock that now. But at the time it was like, how do I be loud enough to be seen, but fake enough to be included. And I'm like, that's a horrible way for a kid to grow up. Oh, it's a horrible way for a kid to grow up. Well, so fast forward, and we haven't even told the audience yet. We, <laughs> we'll get there. But you are you are a, an incredible salesperson. And you have a, a longstanding career in sales. Yes. But you now have this whole business that's a sort of, it's a, uh, it's not sort of a non seasy sales, sales approach. It's literally what it's called, the non seasy sales <laughs> approach. I don't have, I don't know that I said that. That was a lot of la, 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 la. You L's got there. and Z's involved in there. But what what is so incredible to me is that you took all of that, which it in most cases would make somebody nearly incapable of selling because of that fear because of that wanting to fit in because what if they don't like me because what if uh, they're mean to me you know whatever it is and you found a way to make that work in your favor and then you thought oh shit I can help other people do this so it's not really about not being sleazy when you sell I mean it is but it's way more about Loving yourself, trusting yourself, and putting yourself out there. Yeah, showing yourself. Yeah. And and now, I mean, I think the thing that makes me brave, even though sometimes now it feels automatic, I have to look backwards and go, no, the reason that hard one is one of my three words is because I basically exposure therapied myself into rejection to the point where I'm like, guess what? Rejection still hurts. Guess what? Embarrassment still stings. But each time I do it, I don't die. And just because it hurts, it doesn't mean it matters. Mm. Talk more about that. Just because it hurts, it doesn't mean it matters. I put weight on painful things because they're painful. Yeah. Right? So if I do, uh, and this still happens. I am not impervious to this. But, you know, if I put a YouTube video out and a troll finds it and says something along the lines of, like, why would I ever listen to this annoying fat girl? That's going to hurt. Yeah, it is. 
that's going to freaking hurt, especially if I thought it was a great video and I get crickets and that's the only comment I get. That mm. sucks. <laughs> and so yeah, it does. I can spend literally days because I'm also gifted and cursed uh, with OCD. I live with OCD. <laughs> and so I can literally spend literal days fixating on that one comment. I can have it ruin my relationships that day, my productivity that day, my health, my self-care. I can totally choose because of the level of pain that I feel to say, yes, I need to take this break because this was a wholly painful thing. But if you actually look at it, it's one lonely loser on the internet trying to take a stab at me. Does yeah. it actually matter? And does it matter more than what that video was trying to accomplish? Does it matter more than what I was trying to teach, communicate, or share in that video. Because if I took the video down because of the comment, I'd be saying it matters more. That's if right. If I don't put out another video, I'm saying that troll matters more. Why was I doing that? Because it hurt. Yeah. Because it was painful. And so that's what I did. I was like, I have to stop assigning value based on how badly it stings when things go badly. Because sometimes they don't go badly at all. I love that, though. To stop assigning value on something based on how badly it stings. That's There's so much to... T I always tell clients <laughs> what other people think of you is none of your business. Yeah. Um, like, just focus on you and mind your business and it doesn't matter. But that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. So I love this concept of, but does it hurt more than it has value? Right? Like, what do you want to do with the thing that you put out there? And, and can other people not like it and that just be okay? Because it can. <laughs> you know, yeah. not everybody's going to like what you do. And some people are just mean, man. Some people I mean, just suck. People can find fault with literally any and everything. Yeah. yeah people they can. can find fault with the most beautiful, genuine, talented people on earth. So of course they can find fault with spinach in my teeth, yesterday's mascara on me. Of course they can. Yeah, you know, but that's, <laughs> I'm just trying to picture you with spinach in your teeth and yesterday's mascara. That almost feels human. It's, I think it's worse when that, like, we'd make fun of ourselves for. Like, oh, damn, I went on that video with yesterday's mascara and spinach in my teeth. But when we think we've put something really special out there and then somebody is just hurtful, probably, it, it, if we're really honest, because they're protecting themselves or because they feel they see something in themselves that they think is, is bad or wrong and it's easier to shout out at you and give you trouble than to face their own shit, Right. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, I think one of the bravest things I ever did, I I did for myself, but it had this amazing contagion of of encouraging others to be brave in their own way is I, I had so many clients at this one point who, when I was still in marketing and branding, who were so video averse. And that was when like, Facebook was buying billboards in Chicago for Facebook Live. Like, they were really pushing Facebook Live. And so it was on everybody's lips. You got to go live. You got to go live. And I was watching all these people struggle. And I was kind of in it and kind of not. But my clients were like, I would not touch live video with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> and I said, you know what? Like, Let's do that's, it. That's vanity, baby. Like, And the only way that I can show you this is to do this. And so I made a video where I took the palms of my hands and I smeared my makeup down my face. I took my hair and I ratted it, like back combed the ever loving daylights out of it, covered my face in it and put on like the rattiest dress I could find. And I went live and I basically, I don't remember what I called it, but I called it something along the lines of like, look, I'm not dead. Wow, that is brave. And at the point, I just did it out of, like, making myself laugh and a little bit of desperation to, like, kind of shock my clients into their senses. But but I look back at it later, and I'm like, damn. Number one, I didn't die. Number two, that was really brave. Yeah. I didn't die, and it was really brave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't die. And it does model that behavior for the people you're trying to support, right? To I, I actually hate 
being on video, and I'm on video a lot, and people think it's hilarious. And I like to keynote speak. I'm an introvert too. I'm an extroverted introvert too, but I like to keynote speak. But being, I like an audience. If I've got people on the other side, I can do this. But if yeah. I don't know if somebody's watching, if I try to record myself without having somebody to talk to specifically, I'm a tongue twisted and debilitated and all of that. But what I know is so impactful is what you just said is if the thing scares us the most, it's usually a pretty good indicator that it's something we ought to try. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Because that means that that's where our comfort zone ends. <laughs> Everything you really want is just on the other side of uncomfortable. Right. Annie, does it feel brave to you? To be able to look back and go, this little girl who who tried so hard to be worthy has now found a way to stand in worth and to help other people, particularly women, do the same thing. Does it feel brave? Yes, and. Mm -hmm. It does. It really does because... I look back on just so many periods of my life when I was just absolutely so desperate to be loved, to be liked, to be somebody's ideal that I was like, oh, I totally love that book or that movie that I've never heard of, right? It was all a lie. <laughs> and I think being able to, you know, we hear so freaking much about like living your truth and walking your truth and telling your truth. But like, I think it is very, very brave that I am a what you see is what you get person. Like, you know me professionally, but we're also friends and I am cohesive, right? I'm not always on. I need my quiet stuff. I need to recharge. But if you know me personally, you know me professionally. And if you know me professionally, you know me personally because that's just me. And I think that's incredibly brave, and especially for a little girl who literally used to want to shapeshift so desperately. And I also think that it's not – what's really amazing about the bravery is that after a while of doing something so brave, it does become increasingly effortless. That's I don't right. have to think about how am I going to show up as me today. I just sit down and open my mouth and I come out. That's right. And that I is think it. that's it's, even it's a, more It's a, a muscle. Win. It's just a yes, muscle. Yes. Yeah. And so now it's like I don't have to flex the showing up as myself muscle anymore. It just happens. But then I can apply that same bravery to if I get a hater and it stings, or if I want to apply for a new opportunity that's outside my comfort zone, or if I want to completely rebrand to teach sales or any of these things, I have that bravery left over because what used to terrify me is now just day to day. That's right. Oh, I love that so much. And that's, you know, that's the whole point of the work I do. I've taken in the last several months when I meet new people, they say, what do you do? And I said, oh, brave is my business. And mm -hmm. they're like, what does that mean? But that's what it is, is this redefining what it means to be brave. Yeah. And acknowledging what feels brave each day. All these little things that feel brave. And we, of course, then recognize that the more we do them, the more comfortable we become with them. And that there are different things to be brave. And sometimes it's getting out of bed. Sometimes yes. it's going on video with your makeup all over your face and your hair teased up. And sometimes the brave thing is taking your friend's letter and throwing it in the trash and yes. risking them getting mad at you. Like every yes. day it's a different option. But when we know, and you and I talked earlier about the fact that you, you're easy, it's easy for you to reflect and go, oh, that was really brave. But you struggle to find brave in the moment, right? Because I expect brave to be grand. Yeah. And what I experience so much more than that is like micro dosing bravery, like That's micro it. bravery. I call it everyday brave. Yes, yes, yes. Everyday brave. Spot on. A hundred percent. And if and that is all a matter of my self perception and what I choose to focus on. If I'm expecting every brave action to be brave heart we will fight for our freedom and probably die, <laughs> then I'm always going to be looking. 
Yeah, that's but, exactly it. You know, like Mel Robbins in the five second rule, this really changed my perception. Exactly to your previous point, Mel Robbins said in five second rule, sometimes the bravest thing you can do is get out of bed. And right. having a lifelong relationship with anxiety, depression, and obsessive compulsive disorder, I know that that is true. Yeah. I know, and that's just anybody, right? But I know that like, Showing up as a semi-queer person in this world, showing up as a woman in this world, showing up as a full-figured person in this world, showing up as a loud person in this world, with my crooked nose, right, whatever it is, then, you know, telling somebody that what they did is outside my boundary, that's everyday brave. Everyday brave. Setting you know, the boundary and then saying, no, I'm sorry, that's outside of my boundary. Yes. Raising yeah. prices on clients that already used to pay me something else. That's everyday brave. That's right. Right? Uh, posting on social media when I don't want to because I promised myself I would. That's everyday brave. Now, these are just business, right? But re-entering for me from this COVID nonsense and then going back in and out and in and out, that requires a lot of bravery for me. Man, and and if I don't focus on it, I don't notice it. And so if you asked me a year ago, would you consider yourself brave? I'd go, well, no, because I haven't done any grand sweeping gestures. But I can say every single day, I do something that puts me first in a way that 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 fuels me and that is brave. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I love all of that. That's exactly it. That's the whole point of all the work I do. It's the whole point of my books and my speaking and my coaching and this podcast is to recognize our everyday braves and because what I know for sure is that when we do that, we start to choose more of those things. And when we choose more of those things, we start to choose bigger things that have bigger payoffs and rewards. And it's contagious. That's what you give to the people around you. That's how you model that. And they go, oh, maybe, hmm, maybe I am more brave. Maybe I can trust myself more. Maybe I can put myself out there more. Whatever it is, right? Yeah. And even mm -hmm. if they can't make the jump to brave in their mind, at least maybe they can think, at least I don't have to be so scared. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because you talk a lot about, like, it's not about being fearless. It's about being brave. Maybe just getting people to realize that feeling the fear is part of the equation. <laughs> it's, yeah. And doing I mean, that's it anyway brave, is where bravery right? comes. Yes, yeah. Feeling, feeling any of your feelings is brave. Yeah. But allowing yourself to feel feel fear is is so brave mm. so because brave. most people they they feel fear and they immediately turn it into sadness or anger and they want to run and hide from it or they run around and hide from it right we either blow it up into sadness or anger or we shove it under the rug and stick our head in the sand and don't actually allow ourselves to feel it so just being like ha, 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 i'm scared this is tough <laughs> i'm feeling this emotion feeling your feels that's brave it's so brave. It's so brave. And I love this conversation so much because we don't expect folks, and by we, the world tends to not expect folks like me and you who are so outspoken and so sort of out there publicly to go through these same steps and these same motions that they do where this feels still really hard and scary. Just last week, I made a huge business decision and I messaged you. I was like, can we talk? Can you be my friend? Because I'm terrified of this thing I just did. And oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And you were like, yeah, baby, let's talk. It's fine. Yes. Like, yes. we do scary things all the time. Yes. And because, and that with that one in particular, I, I literally haven't been that afraid since I got a divorce. Like that's how much of a big deal, but a big investment this is for me. And I knew that that was like my indicator because it wasn't, a, yes. it wasn't like a, it wasn't being chased by a bear, right? It wasn't like somebody was going to kill me. It wasn't that kind of fear because that's a different kind of fear. It wasn't survivalist fear. It wasn't survivalist fear. Yeah. Uh, and so I knew, and, and I've done some work, some intuitive work to sort of know where I feel things in my body, if it's a good sign for me or a bad sign for me. Yeah. So I knew it was a good one, but man, it doesn't make the fear any less real. It's no. just whether or not you use it to fuel you or you use it to shut you down. Yeah. Is it informing you or is it stopping you? Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay, Andy, in the interest of time, let's talk about your very, very fun podcast. Okie (laughs) dokie. Tell everybody about Too Legitimate to Quit. So I believe that inspiration is everywhere. And for me, inspiration has always showed up in the darndest places like episodes of Golden Girls or billboards on the side of the road when you're stuck in traffic (laughs) going to O'Hare. And I realized that one of the things that unites people, even if it's not exactly the same, is fandom. And so I really wanted to whip up some brilliant, brilliant nerds into their zone of genius, but then also let them just go nuts on a piece of pop culture that they love, whether it's pop or not, doesn't even matter, uh, because it is loved by them and they find it inspiring. So that's how Too Legitimate to Quit was born. Because, again, inspiration is absolutely anywhere. So you and I talked about Bridgerton. I've talked about Star Trek, Cher, New Kids on the Block, uh, Frank Sinatra, so many freaking things. Um, But every time I want to make sure that it's creating that actionable homework and that clarity for small businesses so that they can get out there and compete in a way that feels joyful. Well, and it's really fun because it does tie in. You always have this great way of tying in whatever the pop culture is with what this guest's expertise is and what their message is that they want to get out. And it's a really fun, creative approach. And, you you know, I know it's a business show, but I don't know that you need to be an entrepreneur to enjoy it. No, I have people that, and I, and it always surprises and delights me, right? But I have people that work a nine to five and, and they find different self-advocacy in it. Or, you know, sometimes people just listen to the front chunk and they're like, well, I don't know what Allie McBeal is, so I'm not going to listen to the second half. (laughs) That's your prerogative. Other people are like, I'm not a small business, but I'm completely obsessed with the good place. So I'm just going to listen to this today. That's exactly it. (laughs) Okay. All people welcome. Whatever floats your boat, y'all, I'm into it. I love it. Where can folks find the podcast? Too Legitimate to Quit is available on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, and on a whole bunch of the smaller distributors. Or you can go to toolegitimatetoquit.com. That's a big-ass domain name. Hell yeah, it is! I want a I want, like, to type out. I want the longest possible domain names. I want, like... Too legitimate to quit the podcast experience with Annie By P. Annie Ruggles. P. Ruggles. <laughs> you need a short link for that, my love. Ann Elizabeth Passanisi Ruggles, aka Annie.com. <laughs> oh my God. That's fantastic. Yep. I mean, I, I just love how you make life fun. I love watching you make life and business and podcasting fun and silly. And um, it's just way, way more interesting (laughs) like that. It's one of my favorite things about being in the same space as you is the laughs are always plentiful. You bring out the best in me. Can Uh, we buy you don't call me (laughs) Vicky.com? No, but I have a friend uh, from the wedding industry, and she used to listen to the show. I was on her podcast, too. Her name is Kimberly, and she has the domain. It's Kimberly, not Kim. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's freaking amazing. Isn't that awesome? My hand, uh, my hand, my hat is off to you, Kimberly, yeah. full name. Kimberly, full name. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of that, speaking of being able to to create joy you know, in in most cases, you know, it doesn't mean you don't feel hurt or anger or sad or frustrated, but you really have this wonderful gift of of creating joy. How do you celebrate? Oh, well, I uh, I'm obsessed with Angela Lansbury. So normally, <laughs> so is my partner. Yay! Love her. <laughs> hey. Um, yeah, no, one of my very favorite things, it it normally involves, like, blankets, carbohydrates, and Angela Lansbury, but when I'm celebrating my business, and I also, uh, I send this out to all of my clients, I have a cowbell 
that says, I just yes. made a non-sleazy sale, and I ring the ever-loving daylights out of that thing, not only when I sell, but every time I sell, but definitely when I'm celebrating, uh, because it, for me, just, it's a full-body owning, you know, muscle, auditory, everything, just ringing out this clanky, janky sound of, heck yeah, I did it. So that's <laughs> I how I celebrate. It. I've heard of ringing a bell, like a like a front desk bell, but the cow bell is different. And there is something really physical about that. That's why I like, like to sort of dance and jump up and down because when we take our mental celebration and add a physical thing to it, it, it blossoms. You want to hear my bell? Yeah. <laughs> that one. That should be your thing, Annie. It you is. Can, I send bells to all my clients. Do you send them to your clients? I do. And also my... And I want to be a client just to get a bell. Well, I mean, I can make that happen. <laughs> and my dear friend, cli- uh, my dear friend client, my dear friend and client, Lowry Olofsson, has this amazing thing called Power Songs where he helps people put their songs like into an anthem. And the first line of my song is, I ring my bell in celebration. So Yes! Yeah. Yes. I love that so much. I have a client who I call my client friend, friend, client. Yeah. That's what I, and she's, I, all, I love all my clients. I love all of you and you're all also my friends. But I just sort of coined that for her a couple of years ago. And so yeah. whenever I, I say my client friend, friend, client, she knows it's her. She knows it's well, her. like client and clend don't work. So, yeah, you know, work. sometimes you can smooch stuff. Sometimes you just got to give it the whole client, friend, friend, client. Sometimes you got to go all in, baby. I love it. I love your cowbell. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I love that you send it to your clients. That's great. Here, I thought I had this really unique idea. You were like, uh, yeah, I already do that. They have Heather. their own bubble mailers, <laughs> Vicky. <laughs> okay, Anne. <laughs> oh, my God. I love you, Annie P. Ruggles. Okay. Because we could talk all day long, we and could. then, you know, I don't know. Eventually, they, people would turn us off, probably. But yeah. hit me up with your favorite charitable organization to support Annie P. Ruggles. Oh, I am obsessed, obsessed with the mission, the vision, and the work of Defy Ventures. Defy Ventures provides entrepreneurial training for the formerly incarcerated. Most of these people have never been given a chance by society, and now due to one tiny mistake, they will never be able to fully function in society again because we design it that way. We design it so that they go back into the system. We don't design it for opportunities. Defy helps them by helping them build businesses that are not only elevates their own life, but the people they hire and in turn their whole communities. You can find out about Defy. We have it here in Illinois. It's also in New York, California, Wisconsin, and a few other states. They are incredible. If you love helping people's dream grow and if you believe everybody deserves a second chance, please check out defyventures.org. Love that. I love your passion. You have introduced me to them before, so they are on my radar. I'm actually looking to do some volunteering with them and help with the entrepreneurial work. So, yeah, it's awesome. So, friends, just like I ask you every week, even if it's a like, support, or share, give them a little love. They will be our charity of the week. Annie P. Ruggles, will you share your three words with us one last time? Circuitous, hard won, and impatient. Mm. So we talked about the first two. Let's hit up impatient real quick. I just, <laughs> oh, when you do something brave, you expect an immediate result. Oh, yeah. Right? You're like, I did this very bold thing. And so clearly everything in my life will change immediately. No, y'all. It takes time. Thus, the impatient part. Yeah. Although I would count, I agree with you. I mean, you've got to have patience because... Nothing, nothing happens. You know, overnight success takes 10 years, right? Everything is bit by bit, piece by piece. But I will counter because I want you to lean into more of your everyday brave. And I want all of our listeners to do that. There is an instant reward for saying, oh, snap. That was brave. Or, oh, I'm going to do this brave thing right now. This, I'm going to make this one call or send this one email or post this thing on social media, or ask for this favor, 
or hire somebody or fire somebody or take the day off and go to the beach, like whatever the fuck it is, if you go and that's brave, Mm -hmm. you get an instant payoff. And that's brave. Three words. That's brave. And that's brave. Yeah. Andy, I love you. Thank you so much for spending some time here with us, my friend. Thank you for having me, and you know I love you back. All right. Oh, real quick. Tell folks how to find you. We told them how to find the podcast. How do they find you if they want to learn more about you? AnniePRuggles.com <laughs> or hit me up on Instagram at Anniepreneur or LinkedIn. Just search any version of my name. <laughs> I love it. And we didn't make that longer than it needed to be. No, we the, didn't. The URL. Straight no. to the point. Right? Yeah. It does have the P, though. <laughs> it does. You got to use the P. <laughs> it's an important P. Thanks so much, Annie. I appreciate you. All right, listeners. I hope you had as much fun with this as I did. I've been looking forward to this conversation for a long time, and it brings me a lot of joy to share it with you. And I want to make sure you connect with us as well. I'm on Instagram at Vickery and Co. And the Brave Files now officially has their own Instagram page. It's new. It's lonely. Go and love it. The Brave Files podcast at Instagram. But on Twitter, which is where I'm having so much fun these days, I'm just at Vickery and Co. Come hang out with me over there. Honest to goodness, we are playing over there in really big ways. It's, I'm not trying to leverage that platform. I'm just trying to have some fun. So come have some fun with me. But if you want to talk, if you want to talk about the Brave Files, share how you're out choosing bravely, learn more about success coaching or anything else, send me an email at heather at vickeryandco.com. I promise you I will respond to you personally and directly. And be sure to join us over in the Brave on Purpose Collective. Annie P. Ruggles is there. It's where all the cool, brave kids are so clearly hanging out. And that means you need to be there. Search Brave on Purpose in Facebook and we'll see you there. This is Heather Vickery reminding you today and every day to go out and choose bravely. Hey, friends, I want to share something really exciting with you. We already know you enjoy listening to podcasts because you're listening to this one, but I'm also betting you enjoy audiobooks. And hey, listen, if you don't already enjoy audiobooks, then it's time to check them out. That's why I'm really excited to share Libro.fm with you. They are an incredible new platform for listening to audiobooks. And by choosing Libro.fm over other audiobook services, you are supporting a local bookstore of your choice and investing in your local community. Libro.fm offers over 150,000 audiobooks via their primary platform, which, by the way, they built with love and from scratch because they're a small business also. They even offer bookseller recommendations for great audiobook options. You can sign up right now via www.vickeryandco.com slash librofm. That's vickeryandco.com slash L-I-B-R-O-F-M. And when you do, you'll get one free audiobook of your choice and the proceeds will go to your favorite local bookstore. Now, check what I just said there. You're going to get a free book and the proceeds are still going to go to your local bookstore because Libro.fm makes sure that their booksellers get paid even when they give a promo to customers. I've listened to over 20 audiobooks this year alone. I especially love listening to memoirs read by the author, and it feels great knowing that all of my purchases support my local bookstore, The Book Table, in Oak Park, Illinois. Libro.fm the same audiobooks, the same price, but a completely different story. Check them out right now at vickeryandco.com slash librofm. Have you ever thought about starting a podcast? Maybe you've had this thought and then quickly shut it down because who has the time? Or you don't know how, or gosh, it just all seems too hard. If you have something to share with the world, we want to encourage you to get your message out. The world needs to hear it. Did you know that 50% of all homes are podcast fans? If you've ever wondered about having your own podcast or how it can increase your business or get your message across, then please join me and the other experts from the Podcast Power Academy for our monthly free 
Q&A session. It's called, So You Want to Start a Podcast? This casual live conversation will help you understand how podcasting can be a great decision, why now is the best time to get started, and how to get into action with it. Visit podcastpoweracademy.com to learn more. You've been listening to The Brave Files, stories of people living courageously. To learn more about the show, find our show notes and full episode transcripts, or to get some great bonus content, visit thebravefilespodcast.com. And we would love to know what you think of the show. You can give us a call at 312-646-0205. Let us know your thoughts on the episode, the show in general, or maybe share with us how you're out choosing bravely. This episode is brought to you by Vickery & Co. Success Coaching, coaching that helps you maintain a life well-lived and a business well-run. Learn more at vickeryandco.com. Our music was created and produced in a custom collaboration with Matt Lewis from ML Creative Consulting, a boutique firm dedicated to helping clients identify their unique sound and amplify their brand with custom delivered soundtracks. We couldn't do any of this without our extraordinary audio engineer, Andrew Olson. Learn more about him and check out his work at findandrewolson.com. And special thanks to everyone on Team Brave from our producers, associate producers, copy editors, writers, and support team. Special thanks to Molly, Mary, Kim, Sabra, and Sabrina. I'm your host and executive producer, Heather Vickery. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next week.